Hi! In this video, we're going to have a look at something that I know lots of people really want to be able to do, and it is what happens if you've got some kind of chord scheme in your mind, you know, a sort of series of chords, and you think, oh, I like the sound of that, um, but you're not quite sure how to write a melody that fits with it. So sometimes we might start with a melody, and then we've got to work out which chords fit with the melody, but at other times we might start with a set of chords, and then think, how does a melody go with this? So I'm not going to fuss too much about musical style, because you could do this in a whole range of classical and more kind of poppy styles, rock, whatever you want to do, it doesn't matter. It's the principles at stake that we're going to try and explain in this video. So what I've got here is a blank four bars, and I've got a chord pattern that you know, I came up with earlier, that might be something that you think, yeah, that'll be the sort of thing I could work for. So here are the chords. So I've got an F chord, then a D minor chord, then a G minor chord, then a C chord, and then an F chord. So you see, you might be just sort of trying something out on the keyboard or a guitar or something, and you might think, actually, that sounds quite nice, that progression of chords from F to D minor, to G minor, to C, to F. It's quite sort of satisfying as a progression, isn't it? You know, it starts on F, it finishes on F, it seems to generate one phrase worth of music. The phrase is four bars long. Um, I've got a nice bit of movement, because if you just have one chord every bar, it's a bit predictable. But I've got one chord in bars one, three, and four, but I've got two chords in bar two. So there's a bit of movement in the chords in bar two. Okay, so if I want to write a melody to fit with these chords, well, the first thing I need to do is to be really sure I know which notes are in the chord. So if I've got a chord of F, the notes are F, A, C. So there's F, A, C. In D minor, the notes are D, F, A. So that's D, F, A. In G minor, the notes are G, B flat, D. So G, B flat, D. In C major, the notes are C, E, G. C, E, G. And of course, F major is back to where we started with F, A, C. So, why do I need to know the names of the notes in the chords? That's a very important thing to know, because when you write the melody, the most important thing to do is to use notes that belong to the chord. So in other words, I could compose a melody that entirely uses the notes of these chords. So if I have an F chord, so there's my F, A, C, well, I could use any of those notes in the melody. So I could do a melody that goes like this. F, A, C, F, A, C, F, 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 F. So do you see, if I use notes from the chord, they'll always sound good. As soon as I start using random notes that don't belong to the chord, I'm thinking, what's going on here? So if I use a, an F chord and I start going B flat, I'm thinking, hang on, clashes with a chord, doesn't it? So it doesn't sound quite so good. So if you just use notes that belong to the chord, well, life is going to be all right. So could we do a whole melody with four beats and a bar that sort of fits like that? So we just use notes that belong to the chord. Well, how about something like this? And then... Sorry, the rhythm wasn't quite right in bar two, but you get the idea that I'm just using notes that belong to the chord. Sounds okay, doesn't it? The other thing you can do is you can slip in a few extras. In other words, you can use something that we call in the trade inessential notes. So essential notes or harmony notes are notes that belong to the chord. Inessential notes are notes that don't belong to the chord, but you can kind of just slip them in. All right, so what are the inessential notes? Well, there's one called a passing note. 
So for example, if I go from F to A in this chord, I could pass through G. So do you see what's happening there? G is just passing from one note that belongs to the chord to another note that belongs to the chord. So we call it a passing note, when you just slip one in between two notes that belong to the chord. So that kind of opens up some possibilities. I'll tell you why, because if you've got an F major chord going on for some time and you're stuck with the notes F, A, C, well, after a while, you kind of run out of scope for what you can do. You know, it sounds a bit like a bugle call or something, doesn't it? But if you can put a few passing notes in, so I can go F, G, A, and then I can go A, B flat, C. I'm using B flat because I'm in the key of F and it's got a B flat in the key. So I could do things like this. Where I'm going F, G, A, B flat, C. So the F, the A, and the C belong to the chord. The G and the B flat are passing notes. If you use a passing note, it must pass by step. You can't use a passing note and then leap somewhere else. It has to move by step. So that's a passing note. You could also use something called an auxiliary note, which sounds complicated, but isn't. So if I've got my chord of F, I've got an F in the melody, and I just budge up one to G and come back to F, then that G is an upper auxiliary note. Sounds quite nice. So if I do one on A, if I do one on C. So the upper auxiliary sounds quite nice. You can also have a lower auxiliary. Guess what that is? Where you start with a note that belongs to the chord, you nip down one and you come back again. So F, E, F or A, G, A or C, B flat, C. So you could use passing notes, you could use auxiliary notes. You can also have something called anticipatory notes when you sort of come to the end of one chord and you anticipate a note from the next chord. So say I'm going from this C chord to the F chord. So I've got my C chord down there and I've finished on a G in the melody and then I just anticipate the next chord by tucking in an F. You see what I've done? I started with a G with the C chord I'm going to F in the last bar, but just before I get there, I've got G in the melody and I tuck in a little F, anticipating the F major of the last chord. So you see how that anticipatory note, just anticipating a note from the next chord, can also be effective. Now, by the time you've got your harmony notes, notes from the chords, you've got your inessential notes, your passing notes, your auxiliary notes, your anticipatory notes, Actually, you've got quite a bit of scope for writing a melody. So let's put one down, as I say, in no particular style. And obviously you want to think about a little bit of rhythm. You want to think about the balance between leaps and notes that are next door to each other. You want to think, has the melody got a little bit of shape, a bit of direction? Is it kind of going up and then coming down? What's going on? So it's got some kind of musical interest and a bit of coherence. But let me just try and illustrate what I'm talking about here. So, say we start off like this. So what I've done in the first bar is I've got a harmony note, passing note, harmony note, passing note, harmony note, harmony note. I've got a sort of shape that's going up. I've got five notes next to each other going by step, then I've got a leap, so I've got a bit of a balance between that. What does it sound like? Okay, may not be your style, doesn't really matter, but it's kind of how to do the task. Okay, well, what am I gonna do in the next bar? Well, I've got my D minor chord, so let's repeat the F, because interestingly, the F belongs to the F chord, but it also belongs to the D minor chord. So I'm not saying always repeat a note between one chord and the next, but sometimes it kind of welds things together if you can. We've just had a leap, so I'm going to kind of maybe have a bit of stepwise movement. Maybe do something like this. So now I've got a harmony note, the F belongs to the D minor chord, the E is a passing note, the D belongs to the chord. Then I'm moving to a chord of G minor. Well, actually I could do this, for example. So 
Now, what am I doing there? I'm using something called a sequence. You see, I've got these three notes coming down, F, E, D, and then I've got another three notes coming down, D, C, B flat. So a little idea that's repeated, but just shifted onto different notes. And you notice the same thing's happening twice. There's the F belongs to the chord, passing note. D belongs to the chord, same thing again. D belongs to the chord, C is a passing note, B flat belongs to the chord. So that second bar, I get D minor, G minor, and then I'm going on to my chord of C. So how about I do something like this? Start on C. A little change in the rhythm maybe because it's going to be a bit predictable if it's all the same rhythm. Uh, and then maybe I do something like this. So what have I done here? Um, here's C from the, from the chords, that's a harmony note. D's a passing note, E's in the chord, and then just skipping up to G, which is in the chord. Then you're thinking, why does he use that F? Well, the F is going to be an anticipatory note. So you see what I've done? Illustrated an anticipatory note. And then maybe in the last bar, I'm just going to sort of skip down this chord of F. And that also gives me a sort of shape. You can see it's going up, coming down again, going up, coming down again. It also gives me a little bit of a balance in the last bar, what we call disjunct movement, when we've got some leaps on the go, because we've had quite a bit of movement by step. So there's a little bit of balance in that. And I'm just jumping down notes of the chord in a kind of arpeggio thing. So that's gonna sound all right. And I've been thinking as I've been going through about the rhythm a bit, you know, I've got these crotchets and quavers or um, quarter notes and eighth notes. And I just slipped in this dotted note here just for a bit of variety. And, and at the end, because we're settling at the end of the phrase and we want to take a musical breath because it's the end of the piece or because we're gonna move on to another phrase, I've just got a longer note at the end so it settles. So have a listen to how this works. Now, of course, I could spruce that up and do a bit more with the chords if I wanted to develop that into some kind of a complement rather than just block chords. So you can kind of, if you're playing on a guitar, you could break up the chords a bit. If you're doing that on the piano, you could, you know. Would be another way of doing it. But you could do that in a totally different style, couldn't you? You could have the accompaniment kind of slightly heavier chords. Do something like that. And then you could have a more spirited bit of melody on top of that. Lots of possibilities. Anyway, there we are. That's just a kind of process that you would go through if you've got some chords and you want to know how to write a melody to the chords that you've already chosen.